Hey everybody in the Nachoverse, this is Brandon Hill again, the Director of Strategic Growth with Dental Nachos. I'm really excited because I've got a very cool topic, I, I think it's cool anyway, uh, to talk about today. I think it's an important topic um, about allocating your time and energy. So um, as always, we love bringing you good ideas and we have our key resource and sponsor, um, Dan Bauer with Avitas here. Um, Avitas has been a great help to Dennis and the Dental Nachos uh, community so far. Um, even if you're not already using them, I encourage you to hear what um, Daniel has to say. Um, and this is just really important. So Dan, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Glad to have you. So, I mean, we know that time is, you know, our like finite resource, uh, right? So right. it's very valuable, okay? Um, and then we have practice owners on here who are wondering, okay, I'm a dentist, I'm a business owner, I'm all these things, like how do I allocate uh, my time and energy as a dental practice owner? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about running up, you know, doing your practice, running your business. How do you best spend your time um, as a dentist? Yeah, yeah, great question. And, and well said, right? We, we all have the same amount of hours in a day, right? Uh, to get the things we need to get done. Uh, and if I'm doing uh, things through the lens of a, of a practice owner or a business owner, I want to focus my time where I'm going to be generating revenue and profit within my company. So right. yeah, a lot of the conversations we have with, with dentists and again, business owners in general is, um, you know, should I be spending time on my practice, which is things like basically getting in front of my patients, presenting treatment plans, following up with them, just providing that extraordinary patient experience, which is going to keep people coming back through the door, generating revenue and profit in the first place. Right. And then there's the other side, right, which is not so fun, not the things that they necessarily teach them in, in dental school. And that's kind of the running the business side, kind of the, the unsexy part, if you will, of, of running a practice. That's things like you know, hiring, uh, you know, going through the recruiting process, payroll, uh, standard operating procedures, and of course, you know, the billing cycle, which, uh, you know, Vitas Dental helps on. So it's, it's just hard to balance both of those things, uh, right. especially, you know, being a doctor, a lot of them are, are clinically um, minded and maybe not uh, business minded. And they just sometimes push those things to the side because they don't want to deal with them. And they have someone else, you know, kind of come in and handle those things for them, or they, then spend some of those other time or spend some of their time on those things because they want to maintain control of it. And then the practice side suffers. So it's, it's kind of just that finding that fine balance where how can I spend more, more time on the practice, but kind of have peace of mind on the business side of things, knowing that all these things are, are in place. I'm, you know, basically getting the, the, the money that I'm producing, I'm collecting on all of that. I have that steady stream of, of income coming through and there's just no issues on the business side. That just makes everyone happy. The doctors are happy. The employees are happy because there's no um, hiccups on the, in the uh, front office side of things. And of course the patient's happy as well. So, you know, my unbiased opinion of course is focus on the things that are making you money, the things that you love, the things that you invested all your, your time through uh, school to, to be in the first place, which is to be a dentist first and a, and a business owner second. Such an important thing that we talk about in the dental nachos world all the time is the importance of the fact that, yes, dental school probably doesn't teach you a lot about running a business, um, but here you are, you're, you're a business owner, and uh, you've got not just the responsibilities of running the business, but you got to really develop the know-how how to do it effectively. But right. what did you get in this business for? You got into this business because you love dentistry and you love being a clinician, you love practice. And so anything that you can, so, you know, if, if you know you need to work on your business and make it better, but you know, you also, you know, maybe not be the best at, but also want to spend more time in front of your patients and developing those relationships, which ultimately are where your business revenue come from, listening to people like Dan and the advice they can give you and the tools and resources that they have are going to make a lot of sense for you. So now that we know what the problem is, all right, practice responsibilities versus business responsibilities, dig in a little bit for me uh, there, Dan, and just tell me how to parse that out. Like, what does a, how do you help to do that? And what should a dentist be looking um, yeah. to as far as how to parse, parse that out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. So Avitas Dental helps on that just by providing everything a, a practice would need on the what we call the front office side of things. Right. So right. there's just a million different things that go on on the front office that, um, you know, you're you're leaning on an office manager, a patient coordinator, um, you know, uh, 
an administrator to, to kind of handle all these things, right? Um, but they get overwhelmed as well. They're also right. wearing two hats. They're, they're right. dealing with the practice side. They're dealing with the business side. They're trying to keep patients happy. Um, but then, you know, they're also managing sitting on the phone with insurance companies or having a dealing with an HR question or the PPP loans that we've recently been dealing with, with COVID right. going on. So there's a million things that they get dragged into as well, right? So they're neglecting the patients as they walk through the door. They're having to make a decision. Do I hang up the phone with this insurance company or the bank on the PPP loan to, to greet this person with a smile? Or do I stay on and just kind of ignore that patient for now? So those are the kinds of things that kind of get in the way, both for the doctor and, and the staff. So what we try to do is kind of narrow down some of those things on where is the practice owner's time best spent? And then where right. is the, the office time best spent? Uh, because there's a lot of practices that we partner with where they have people that are, you know, players on their team, right? They've been with them for 10, 15 years. They are a core function of that practice. Well, it right. doesn't make sense to have them uh, sitting on the phone with insurance companies. So there's just little voids like that that we can kind of bridge the gap on. Um, a lot of it is on the billing cycle. Sometimes it's just from an accounting standpoint. Um, it all kind of just depends. But what, what we want is just like you said earlier, is to get those practices, our practice owners focused on the things that they love. We want them to be happy because if they're happy, their patients are going to be happy. Their employees are going to be happy. Again, people are going to be coming back. And I would venture to say all this other kind of minutia um, on the front yeah. office side of things doesn't make people happy. doesn't make me happy even talking about it, but that's why <laughs> I love what we do is because we're able to relieve a lot of these headaches from practice owners. That's a very good point. And, and, you know, just talking about Avitas, you know, Avitas is a billing company, but you're so much more. Um, so, so tell our audience just a little bit more about that, you know, what you do as a billing company and, you know, dig in a little bit to what makes you guys unique in the industry and helping dentists lives yeah. be, you know, more convenient. Yeah. So, so Avitas Dental really started um, with the idea of being kind of a middle ground between a DSO and an independently owned practice to okay. try to provide something in the middle to give them that same infrastructure, right, that a DSO would have in terms of all the administration, in terms of just having all those processes in place, all those same benefits without having to relinquish control, um, without having to go the kind of employee route, which I know a lot of, you know, doctors are, are going for today right out of college, because it's just a little bit easier, right? They can come in right. and they can focus on dentistry. Right. Uh, and then there's the independently owned side, which is where we get into that side of now I got to focus on being a business owner. So Vitas Dental exists to kind of be that in between, right, where we can provide all those same things on a more a la carte type basis. It's not an all or right. nothing. You're not an employee. You're you basically have your retirement plan back, right, with the practice, with the real estate, with everything that comes from being a business owner, um, but not have those same kind of headaches that exist from um, going um, without a DSO. Um, so a lot of a lot of people are starting to, to trend towards the DSO side, but they're um, starting to realize that maybe they want to venture into their own own practice, right? right, um, right. But they're used to kind of a certain uh, certain lifestyle, kind of a, the luxuries that come from um, being a DSO is they don't have to deal with those headaches, and so now we're we're seeing this kind of wave of of you know practice owners that are, or, or rather people who are working in DSOs who are maybe looking to buy a practice. There's a big generation of baby boomers who are looking to sell and they're right. just trying to figure out how do I accomplish all these business related tasks out the gate, like billing, like marketing, like accounting, all those things. So I can still have that same luxury of being a dentist first and being a business owner as well. So that's kind of why we exist is just to allow that, that focus and that, that passion to come um, you know, back to fruition and maintain that uh, by way of being a practice owner. And this makes you guys so valuable on, on several levels and, and basically for everyone who's listening, because no matter what stage you're, you're in, chances are you're in a stage where learning more about Avitas or connecting with you and, and the Avitas team can be beneficial. And, and I like the fact that you explain that you're kind of the best of both worlds. You get the support of the, the DSO, but the autonomy of being a private practice owner um, and, and, and taking care of this as your own baby. But at the same time, even if you're not a practice owner and you're say you're working, you know, for someone else, or maybe you are working for a DSO and that's, and the reason you work for the DSO is because of these benefits and this infrastructure, this is a great opportunity for you to connect with somebody that can help you transition um, into uh, being an owner. And we, you know, we talk to people all the time and I know there's plenty of people listening right now 
who are in that stage right now where they're looking on becoming an owner. And the other thing, the baby boomers that you talked about, the people that are selling, um, you know, this is this can kind of be like that fresh cone of paint that you put on to sell the house or that railing that you fix. If you tighten up now, if you're planning on selling soon, um, this can make your practice more attractive to a prospective buyer because of how you have these systems and infrastructure in place. So you're, you're a great resource. So I got some more questions for you because I want you to sure. dig in a little more about what's going on in the industry. But how do people reach out to you or Vetus if they want to learn more? Yeah, yeah. You can uh, visit us at our website and fill out a kind of a consultation form if you'd like. It's just avitasdental.com. Um, I'm on the, uh, or in the dental nachos groups. Um, uh, you can, you know, can contact me there. I can leave my number there as well. Um, you know, or you can email me. You know, really all, all we're looking for is to kind of take a, you know, consultative approach into your practice and see, you know, where we can help. You know, if right. it is kind of putting that fresh cone of paint on, um, maybe we are providing kind of that, that scalable solution for that next dentist to step in seamlessly, or we are providing an easier way for someone to make the uh, transition from a, a DSO over to a independent practice. Now, all we're looking to do is help you make a sound business decision on partnering with us or not. And those are the kinds of conversations we have. And, and we walk you through kind of a, a financial analysis of here's where you're at today. Here's what it looks like with us. And sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we just want to be able to kind of help that community out there uh, make good business decisions and kind of get some of these things off their plate. And I know Ariel's probably putting some things in the comments. So please check out the comments as you're watching here on Facebook on how to reach out to Dan and learn more. Um, you can also text the word Avitus, that's A-V-I-T-U-S, to 215-543-6454. So that's texting the word Avitus, A-V-I-T-U-S, to 215-543-6454. 6454 to learn more. Um, so, and, al and also, um, so, so let's kind of get back to the conversation because I had a question um, that I wanted to ask you and it's like, yeah. I know you've probably seen people talking to dental practices and owners all the time where I'm pretty sure there are some who are trying to be very business minded right. who maybe now go too far. So, you know, on one hand, we know that a lot of dentists don't get prepared for this in dental school, but then a lot of them kind of learn it on their own or, or over time and, and get a little business savvy themselves, <clears throat> excuse me, and they want their business to be successful. So maybe now they are neglecting, you know, the clinical side and, and being a dentist. And then you probably see the other side, obviously, as well as people who don't do the business at all. So talk right. to me about what it looks like. What does it look like when the business side is being neglected? And then what does it look like when the being a, a, a practitioner side is being neglected? Yeah. Yeah. So on, on the business side, when, when that's being neglected, they're basically, they're working, let's just say a uh, hundred hours a week, but only getting paid for 80 of them. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine doing that, um, but it is so common in the dental industry where that's just kind of the, the expectation is I know I'm going to do X amount of work, but only going to get paid um, X amount of dollars for it, you know, not in, right. in correlation. So when they are focused, when the business side is neglected, um, there's just a million different things that kind of uh, foster leakage, if you will, right? I mean, there's a ton of overhead that goes in from being a dentist from the start, uh, you know, the rent, the, uh, the wages, you know, the equipment, you know, you name it, uh, that they need every penny that they're producing on. Um, so when they're not focusing on some of those things, when they don't have good uh, systems in place, good follow-up procedures, the right people in the right seats doing these jobs, it's just kind of the death by a thousand paper cuts that allow for that, that leakage to happen. And they're not as profitable as they should be or profitable at all. Um, and they don't know why. They can't seem to pinpoint it. Right. Now, alternatively, when they're uh, neglecting the practice side, they're neglecting the, the piece that is generating revenue. I mean, every business is designed to make revenue. Um, and when you're a dentist, that revenue comes by way of your patients, getting people in the door, getting them in uh, for a, you know, a second visit, you know, two, three times a year, and just getting new, new clients. So when you're ne neglecting the practice side, you're not providing a good, you know, good care, your office staff isn't providing the good experience, people aren't coming back, you're not following up with them to get them in for that second cleaning, that's just missed revenue. Uh, and that's really what it, it's, it's all about is you're not spending the time on your, your product or your service, which is your people. Um, and so it's, it's just kind of this double-edged sword and, and balance and kind of just game you play of what, it, what should I be focusing on? And I would venture to say that it is on the practice side uh, because that's your product or service, that's your, your revenue and everything else falls into place after that. Excellent. Thanks for explaining that. So the create the balance, the bottom line is having a tool like Avitas um, on your side as a resource 
um, will help you create that balance. So even though most of your energy will be devoted to patients, um, you know, the, you won't neglect um, the business side of things from an operational standpoint. And it's really about systems, right? Um, right. Everything that matters needs a system and everything matters. As, as we say often here at Dental Nachos, I know Dr. Paul Goodman um, likes to use that phrase. So right. what do you see going on in the industry right now? Uh, are there any trends um, that are going on that are affecting, you know, this dynamic? Um, and, and how does Avitas uh, work well with that? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, a couple trends, you know, one is the, you know, what we kind of alluded to earlier, which is with the, uh, the wave of dentists coming out of school and, you know, seeking the DSO model first, just because it is kind of the, the easy route, good way to, for people to cut their teeth. Yeah. Um, but I, I think uh, the dental industry in, in general follows the medical industry by about 10 to 15 years. Um, so okay. there's a lot of things that the medical industry has been doing now for a while, you know, like partnering with a billing company or, you know, working for these larger medical conglomerates with you, if you will, like a Kaiser, like an SEL health, um, right. because it allows them to not worry about the business side, right? They have CFOs, they have CEOs of these organizations that put all these things into place that are the visionaries. And then the, the doctors um, in the medical space can focus on providing their, their patient experience. And the, the dental industry seems to be following suit. Um, but, uh, you know, with that said, there, there is just a different solution um, because ultimately if, if that is the, the trend that we're seeing, there's not going to be a lot of practice owners. It's just going to be DSOs. Uh, right. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm pretty, pretty uh, agnostic when it comes to DSOs, but I know small businesses and small practices are the backbone of our economy. So we want to do all we can to kind of foster the growth in that space still um, and provide a solution to, yeah, have the business tasks covered. Um, but again, focused on that, that patient and practice side of the, of the, uh, of the practice. So that's kind of the trend we see is, is people moving um, in a direction that medical is doing, getting some of these, you know, systems infrastructure in place, um, but also allowing them to still run independently. Well, I know you said earlier that this conversation is not like, you know, the sexy topic, but I think, you know, you know, you just brought sexy back to talking about <laughs> um, running, running your practice and allocating your time. So I really appreciate the insight that you gave today. I hope everyone learned something, but I also hope that you do what we always encourage you to do with Dental Nachos, JFO, just find out. Um, yeah. The key resources and sponsors that we bring to you um, don't just have things to say, they have value to bring. Um, and if nothing else, talking to people like Dan um, will educate you and empower you and help you do better, to reduce stress, increase your success, but also there's usually some great tool that they're gonna have for you as well that I encourage you to take advantage of. Any additional information you wanna leave our audience with today before you go, Dan? No, oh, yeah, well, well said. I mean, we, we do want you to just find out. I mean, we are here to help. And so our process looks like sitting down with myself and our, our dental billing manager, Kristen Garduno, who's in a lot of the seats that, you know, probably these listeners are today. Um, she used to be a, an office manager and practice manager. So she gets these things, she gets these headaches and we just genuinely want to help. So we just, we want to sit down with you, understand where some of those gaps may or may not be and, and just really show you from a truly, uh, you know, financial kind of uh, objective standpoint on what, your practice is doing now and what you could be doing with the Vetus Dental. And if it's a good fit, great. If not, our feelings aren't hurt. We truly are here to help. Thanks so much, Dan. We really appreciate it. Once again, text Avitas, A-V-I-T-U-S to 215-543-6454. There's also a link to a direct page um, where you can sign up to learn more or get started uh, with Avitas right there. And there's, there's always, there's Dental Nacho TLC, there's special offers and, and attention. Um, that you get when you're coming from Dental Nachos. So um, thank you, Dan. Thank you for being a key resource of our group. Thank you for helping the dentists that you've been helping so far. I know we're always connecting you with people or hearing about people um, that can use your services, and we're happy to do that, and we're happy to see the results and the help that you've been giving them. So thank you, everyone at Dental Nachos, for listening, and we'll talk to you guys again soon with some more um, key resources and good ideas for your practices. See you now. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, guys.